Good day everyone, we are the students of Psych 201 and we are here to discuss a movie called Love and Other Drugs. In this emotional comedy, Anne Hathaway portrays as Maggie, an alluring free spirit who won't let anything including formidable personal challenge to tie her down. But she meets her match in Drake Jill and Hal who portrays as Jamie, whose relentless and nearly infallible charm serve him well with the woman in the catchroot world of pharmaceutical sales. Maggie and Jamie's evolving relationship relationship takes them both in surprise as they find themselves under the influence of the ultimate drug called love. This goes the opposite direction and thus makes an unexpected film from unconditional love story. Now, let's connect this movie to a lesson that we've discussed for this week. Transmitters are chemical messengers in the body. Their job is to transmit signals from nerve cells to target cells. These target cells may be in muscles, glands, or other nerves. Neurotransmitters relay their messages by traveling between cells and attaching to specific receptors on target cells. Each neurotransmitter attaches to a different receptor, for example, dopamine molecules attach to dopamine receptors. When they attach, this triggers action in the target cells. In this movie, a young woman, Maggie, has an early stage of Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's disease is a progressive disorder that affects nerve cells in the brain responsible for body movement. The brain neurotransmitter changes in Parkinson's disease. From the cl clinical point of view, Parkinson's disease has traditionally been regarded as a typical disturbance of the function of the basal ganglia, which comprise the talons phallic subcortical brain centers and associated nuclei, notably caudate nucleus and palladium and substantia nigra. Acetylcholine is a chemical messenger or neurotransmitter that plays an important role in brain and muscle function. Imbalances in acetylcholine are linked with chronic conditions including Parkinson's disease. Love and Other Drugs is a story about a guy who starts a relationship with a young woman suffering from Parkinson's disease. This disease is a neurodegenerative condition that causes involuntary movements, tremors, and difficulties with thinking and mood. According to studies, the body needs a balance of acetylcholine and dopamine, another chemical messenger to control movements well. Experts have discovered that people with the condition often have a decrease in dopamine that allows acetylcholine to take over. When this occurs, muscles become too excited which leads to sim symptoms such as jerking movements and tremors. Serotonin is present in the midbrain, in the cluster of cells called the rapine nuclei and in the medulla. This structure sends the nerve fibers to the forebrain, the cerebellum and the spinal cord which suggests a widespread method of influencing arousal, sensory perception, emotion, and thought processes. So why is serotonin decrease in the Parkinson's disease? In a neuroanatomical terms, it is unsurprising that there is a widespread serotonin depletion with the central nervous system in Parkinson's disease. Since the dorsal rapine nucleus, which is a site of predilection of fluid body pathology and cell loss, sends a neuronal projection to striatum, frontal cortex, limbic system, and diacephalon. I'd like to start with love and other drugs. Maggie Murdoch has free-spirited Parkinson's disease and her co-author, Mr. Jamie Randall, is a pharmaceutical salesman or drug prep. So basically, dopamine is released when your brain is expecting a reward. When you come to associate a certain activity with pleasure, mere anticipation may be enough to raise dopamine levels. It could be a certain food, sex, shopping, or just about anything else that you enjoy. Therefore, dopamine plays a key role in this process, along with other neurotransmitters. Dopamine is the primarily primary neurochemical responsible for our experiences of attraction, love, and desire. In addition to what dopamine does to our mood, it can also affect movement, memory, focus, and the desire to seek and repeat pleasurable activities. When the brain has a healthy level of dopamine, they feel good. When they feel good. That's why Jamie and Maggie have many scenes where they want to have sexual activities because of their high sex drive 
Also, in the scene, Jimmy has improved focus and learning ability in his goal to have a lot of quota on selling Viagra and Zoloft drugs. High or low levels in dopamine affects the person. If you have high dopamine levels, it can lead to ADHD addiction or even binge eating. On the other hand, if you have low dopamine level, it can lead to Parkinson's disease, which Maggie has. And it affects the nervous system that causes loss of muscle control. A person that have Parkinson's disease may have challenges living their daily lives. It can affect their walk, their movements, and tremors on their extremities. It, they can also experience memory loss or dementia. People that mostly affected by Parkinson's is mostly men aging over 50. Parkinson's is a lifelong disease and sadly, there is no cure, but it has treatments that can only relieve its symptoms, but not totally cure it. Norepinephrine is another term for noradrenaline. It is a stress hormone released into the blood that also functions as a neurotransmitter in the central nervous system and is produced by the adrenal modula. When physiological changes are triggered by a stressful situation, the locus cerealis in the brain is active, in turn causing the release of norepinephrine. In the sympathetic nervous system, norepinephrine is released from the neurons to trigger the fight or flight response in various tissues. Norepinephrine is believed to play a vital role in the maintenance of good mental health. Depression, one of the most common mental health issues people face today. Norepinephrine is used widely in the medical field. It's often used to treat low blood pressure, particularly endorphins. Endorphins are the body's natural painkillers. Endorphins are released by the hypothalamus and pituitary gland in response to pain or stress. This group of peptide hormones both relieves pain and creates a general feeling of well-being. Endorphins act as a neurotransmitter, a chemical that helps to carry signals across the nerve. How do endorphins function? The most common one is that the pain relief helps to survive. Our body releases endorphins which block the nerve cells in charge of relieving the pain signals. This allows our body to function in day-to-day -day life without being distracted. Antifalins. Antifalins is a plant of method involved in regulating nociception in the body. The antifalins are termed indigenously dense as they internally derive and bind to the body's opioid receptors. Antifalins mainly work by binding and activating ME and Delta opioid receptors. They play a role in memory, learning, emotional behavior, and pain. Balance and capillance level are needed to maintain normal brain function. Neuromodulators are chemicals that are diffused widely throughout the brain, only not occurring at the synapse, as neurotransmitters are within specific pathways. They act in conjunction with neurotransmitters, as their name implies, modulating the activity of surrounding chemicals. Some receptor sites are organized to receive both neurotransmitters and neuromodulators. As for Jamie, of love and other drugs, who happens to have early onset Parkinson's stage 1, she can control the movement of her hands, which shakes rapidly. Jamie Randall is willing to help her cure her psychological sickness. Pheromones are chemicals secreted by animals, which changes the behavior of another animal of the same species. However, the role they play in humans remains to be seen, as adults have no vomeronasal organ, which process pheromone signals in animals. What we have is olfactory system, though underdeveloped and it underrates our smelling sense. There are four types of pheromones. The releaser pheromones, which prompt behavior reaction. Signaler pheromones, which provide hierarchy and in food information as well as food availability. Modulator pheromones for neuropsychological parameters. And primer pheromones affect neuroendocrine 
parameters including menstrual cycles. 